Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bourbon Neophyte. Glad that you can make it this evening. Hope you all are doing well. I know that I am. And yes, I do appreciate that, Dan. Smash that like button and please hit that bell so you get the notifications. And of course, subscribe. It's very important. That really helps everything. John, always a pleasure to see you here and Cheech himself down there in Florida tonight. Hope all is well down there. I haven't actually had a chance to chat with you a while, Cheech, but we'll catch up soon. Brian, sorry I missed your stream on Saturday. I was just out and about a bit and uh, I, I, I just totally missed it. However, I did see what you did, so I do think it is great. I really do. I've got a few ideas. I'm going to have to call you one day and, and bounce them off you and see uh, see maybe if you can't churn something out there. Because I, I, I think that uh, I, I, I think you can and I think it would be uh, a neat little thing. But anyway, neither here than there. Mr. Morgan, I hope everything is well for you across the pond today. Um, question for you while you're there, um, James. Um if I'm not mistaken, my time zone, or excuse me, my time here and your time over there in the UK, you are, what, about eight hours ahead of me. Because reason why is, and, and you know this because um, you left me a, a comment before, there are some fellow YouTubers over there that you saw that I was commenting in their chat, and we are trying to work some stuff out and the schedule is a little rough but okay that's what i thought perfect that that's what i wanted to know so i know you know what i'm talking about but yeah it's um it's a little tough working out a, a schedule but I'm, I'm getting close and i haven't gotten a chance to talk to them yet but they're they're in the works so anyway Mr. Evans, always great to see you here. Richie Z, cheers, man. Appreciate you popping in over here. Uh, it's always great to have people over here like that. Uh-oh, Mr. Whiskey Shits. Cheers, man. Really do appreciate you coming over and enjoyed the show. I was busy getting things set up, but you guys pretty much had a, uh, had a full screen most of the time that I had seen, which is perfectly all right. I was working out some little details here. As you know, things happen. Bourbon Baller Lee, cheers, brother. Thanks for popping in over here. And again, please make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel. So I'm sure you all have seen the topic of discussion um, that we have here uh, tonight. And the other day, well, the other day was Friday night, I had uh, come home and my wife hands me a, a bottle and I'm like, what's this? She says, well, I bought this for you. So she was out and about on Friday and picked up a bottle of Hirsch whiskey, which she knows I have the Horizons right here, which I actually enjoy. And most of you know, I'm a, a proofy bitch. So it usually has to be north of 100 or at least 100 for me to really like it. However, the Horizon uh, at 92 proof turns out to me, I, I, I like it. It's a nice little sipper, four-year-old uh, whiskey, as you know. Uh, it does have some six-year-old mixed in it. So basically, it's 94% four-year-old and 6% six-year-old whiskey that makes up this particular one. But anyway, the wife was out and about, and so she picked me up this one. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of this before. It's Hirsch. They call it the Bivouac. And now, everybody has different pronunciations for this, but it's Bivouac. As in, you know, like what you would do, you Bivouac for the night. Yeah, it is. And like I told somebody today, I said, Google it. <laughs> you'll find out. But that's how I'm pronouncing it. So anyway, this is the bottle. 
it is 50 ABV, so 100 proof. Um, I'm going to turn this around because I thought it was pretty interesting. The mash bill makeup of this bottle is the same mash bill makeup as their 16 year old juice. So none of you know, I'll tell you. The ratio is this. It's 95% three year and five month old whiskey. So first off right off the bat, it's I'm expecting it to be young. I don't want any preconceived notions, but it's three year old juice. 5%, the other 5% that's left is eight-year-old juice. Now, the mash bill on the three-year-old juice is 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% barley. The remaining 5% of the eight-year juice is 72 corn, 13 rye, and 15% barley. Barley malt, to be exact, same as the other one. Sorry, I just left that out because I'm reading faster than I'm spitting it out. But anyway, but what intrigues me is I do like the higher rye content that it has. So I'm expecting that rye spice that you would think you would get a taste of on this. So in order to keep my palate pretty much set, I have been sipping on the horizons most of the day today, just so I, uh, I'm used to what this particular juice is going to be like. So that that makes sense to you all. So anyway, um, you know what it, it just hit. Well, I don't say hit here. It's been out here for just a little bit. And matter of fact, ASMR whiskey, aka Andrew and I actually were looking at it today because we stopped at Liquor Lineup 2 together and um, just chewing the fat a little bit. But anyway, um, yeah, it does seem like it, it's going to be a, an interesting little pour there, Tim. So I haven't opened it yet, but like I said, I'm drinking this one and I have been drinking this one most of the day. So give me a, just a second here and I don't want to scare anybody, but I've got to open this thing and I am not going to fight and trying to keep pulling on this stupid ass tabs to get that off. So we're just gonna go ahead and use my bottle opener and take care of that. And yes, I use a Spyderco, if you wanna know. So that being said, I'm gonna open this up. The noise you hear is my wife walked into the room. Don't have to close the door. Oh, I don't. Well, no, you're not talking anymore. <laughs> Anyway, so still being off. There we go. I was like, I know I cut that thing all the way around. But anyhow, yeah, the arm and stuff that you see there, that, that's the wife. Yes, she does exist. There she is. That's the woman that purchases my booze. So hold on here. I'm not, I'm not going to break my nail opening this. So that's why I keep this here. But anyway, so I literally have not. So you can see I've literally not. Wow, that was a nice cork pop right there. That is for sure. She's smelling the other one. So I'm going to pour some in my Deathless Dogs Glen. I sure hope you all got one of these things. But I'm going to pour some in there. Show you there's some in there. I don't know why, but it smelled peachy, but she said she wants to smell it. And I said, well, you go right ahead. Let me put that cork back on here. Sorry, lost my concentration there for a second because I'm working on that. But it's pretty interesting. So I'm going to leave that set. This smells lighter. Well, it would be. It's three-year juice versus four-year juice. So there would be some differences to it. But my wife said the the... Bivouac smells lighter. I said, that's very true. I would expect it to be, being that it's a three-year juice. But I just put my Glen cover over it. You know, the one I get from Big Vic. I'm going to leave that set for a few minutes, allow it to 
open up a little bit in the glass, but I don't know if any of you have have tried Hirsch in general or uh, tried the Bivouac at all. I know that uh, you haven't seen it just yet, Tim, but uh, I'm sure if it's if it's here, you've eventually either have it, it's there somewhere, but I can't believe in Illinois that uh, they don't have it. And well, yeah, <laughs> and I'm pouring it today. The price isn't bad. Tax out the door, you were about 60 bucks. I think it was 55. Eh, don't quote me on the thing, but I know it wasn't over 60 it's bucks when you went out the door. It. Well, that's right. I didn't buy it. She bought it for me. But so it's it's not a bad price and uh, it's 100 proof. So like I always say, it, it's it's nice to be able to find something at that price point that drinks good, that's available and doesn't break the bank. So with that said, you know, we'll, we will find out uh, what is what here in just a few more moments. Yeah. I didn't buy him the $180 Hirsch cash strength. Yeah, she did. She didn't buy me that. Although I did look at it today. I did look at it today along with a, uh, um, Oh my gosh, a hold on. Let me look at something here. Not was it the Glen Goyne 18? Well, I did look at that today, but no. Um there was a red breast 15 you were looking yeah, at. Yeah, the red breast 15 we looked at. No, but that wasn't it. Oh my god, I cannot believe it just popped out of my head. Um oh my gosh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I cannot believe I I'm doing this. Um, Was it a Glenn, Glenn Fettich 15? Nope. Um, wow. It'll come to me. I got to stop. I cannot believe it. Um, you have a brain fart, dear. Yes, I am. Oh, my goodness. It was a 15-year-old. Was it a Glenn Marenji? Oh, darn it. Anyway, while that's opening up, while that's opening up, the Hearst single barrels are tough to find here. Only one I found was the cognac. Okay, that's funny you should mention that, Tim. Um, the guy at Liquor Line was talking about the cognac finish, and he said out of all the Hershes, if he's going to buy one, he really liked that finish. So the cognac finish to him was um, was just phenomenal. I haven't seen one. It's overpriced in the UK and they mark them up 100%. I'm sure they do. You know, it's, it's a long ways there across the pond. That's for sure. Long ways across the pond. Oh my gosh, what is that bottle? But anyway, got picked up something else today. You gifted something today. That's true. I was gifted this whole bottle today, but I've got to show it off. Can you all make that one out? There we go. And yes, that says Douglas Lang up there, Rock Oyster, Cask Strength. Yes, it is. Cask Strength right there. So this was gifted to me today. So I was like, oh my gosh. This is a, to me, is a good little, well, little bottle, a good bottle, good bottle. Not cracked. I'm not going to do it today, but... Uh, it's pretty clear. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that thing. Just delicious. Well, yes. You and, told me that nobody believes I exist, so I came in to show them I exist. Yeah, she exists. Trust me, she's here. She she is right here. She wanted to come. I, I always tell her she's got to stick her head in there or come and sit. But, you know. So she's okay. here. See? There she is. She is here. She actually does exist. I just got off my life. Yes, she was busy doing her thing. But yeah. anyway. Good night. Oh, you're going? Okay. Do you want me to stay? You can stay whatever you'd like There's to do. There's a chair in here for me to sit on. Well, all right. I'm going to have to get her a chair. I'm going to have to get her a chair. Um, 
I don't even know where they are. I don't know where they are. I'll join you next Sunday. Okay, next Sunday. She's we'll just, we'll, she's we'll get a chair for next Sunday. We'll have a but chair. I do exist. She does exist. She'll join in next Sunday. So there you go. So I I'll have to work tomorrow. Yep. We all got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, well, I got to go earlier than you. Well, that's true. But I still get up the same time as you. Anyway. Hey, Isaiah. Cheers, man. So next week. Next week for sure. I was like, why is this thing going? Next week for sure. She's going to be up there. Cheers, brother. Great to see you here. Great to see you here. But anyway. So. This bivouac, I'm I'm interested, particularly because it's hundred proof. Ooh. Now see, it does smell fruity. That peach that I said originally that I got on there, I'm like, wow. Typical bourbon notes of like a little caramel, a little brown sugar. It smells light, just like my wife's. I don't know if it's because she put that in my head, but it smells light. It's it's not bad. I mean, check out the color. It's not. It is not as dark as the horizons. It is not as dark as the horizons. That's for sure. But yeah, very. It's fruity. I am picking up citrus note, so hence fruit. But peach is what was dominant a little bit ago on the nose. It, it doesn't have, to me, um, a more typical bourbon notes. They, because of the, it seems to be very fruit forward. To me, and if I were just giving this a quick sniff without really spending the time with it that I am right now, I might almost say scotch because I'm getting a little bit of that malt, that sweet bread note that I get from single malt scotches. I get a little bit of that on here, but, you know, it's not super strong, but I picked that up with the fruit. And so, if, like I said, if I wasn't, didn't see this thing and I just took a, a quick nosing on it, that, or I might even, I might even mistake it for a high west. So if any of you, well, I'm sure you've had high west. So if you've had the, some of the high west whiskeys, um, let's say the double rye, um, yeah, I'm going to say right along like the double rye, maybe finished in which one? Oh, I don't. OK, the, the nosing on this is similar to the High West double rye that I have finished in peat because the peat isn't quite predominant on the nose on that particular High West. But this this for some reason gives me that. And I'm like, wow. Let me go back to this. Uh-oh, it's live wire. Cheers, man. Hey, oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, you know, when them house guests don't leave there, Mike, I, I know how tough it is. I, I understand completely. That's for sure. But so, yeah, this is what that now really just thinking about it. If I had this in a blind, more nosing it more, I would... I would have called this High West just because of the nosing I got on it. So let me see what it's like on the palate. Well, you know, let me, uh, let me hold off just a moment here and, and before I say anything else and get another little sip in here. Citrusy. 
citrusy on the palate. The rye spice is rolling across the tongue right now. The rye spice is rolling across the tongue. Definitely, definitely citrus notes on the finish. And um, it's young. You know it's young, even though it's, uh, you know, it is on the back. It is young. Not extremely viscous at all, but the, the, the spice lingers, the citrus lingers on the finish. So it's, the finish isn't short at all. The spice just kind of starts from the back and, and, and comes up in waves. To me, that's what it feels like, that it's coming back in waves. Let me get another sip on this. Wow. Yeah, very citrus, very citrusy, zesty type of finish on there with that rye spice, which it's nice. I don't find it overly sweet when I say overly sweet. I don't find it. I don't find it. It doesn't have that that bourbon sweetness, if that makes sense. And so let's just say this, Richie Z. I can't say it's delicious. If, all right. I think it might need a little more time to open up. I cannot say it's delicious. I cannot say it's bad. Right now, I'm going to give it a an just... On these sips, okay. If if you ask me to pick right now, I would tell you to pick this up and don't think twice about it at around $40 uh, for the horizon. And 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 I, I think it's a, a very nice. I had three or four drams of that today. I had one at lunch, then I had one in the afternoon. I had I was sipping on another one with, with dinner, and then my little control glass here is. It's what's left in it. So that's the fourth one. And that's the one I've been on all day long, other than um, when Andrew and I tried a few at uh, Liquor Lineup today. Um, but I haven't had much. But yeah, I, I, I can't say that this really is, is delicious. Oh, Jack, Jacob, are you just sticking your head in here? Or did you see what I held up a couple of minutes ago? Let me know in, in, in chat. But the nose is, is, is pretty good. I really like that, that fruitiness of the nose. Um, I, I really do. I, I, I think it's, I, I think it's nice on the nose, but like I said, it, it, it's very reminiscent of a high West double rye to me. Just the tastings, not the nose per se, per se, not the nose per se, but, and then on the palate, um, it's not similar because the other one has a little peat finish, but there's just, if I was really nosing it and I was, didn't know what this was and you asked me to pick, I can tell you that I would probably went with a high West because that's what it's reminding me of. But, um, Stick around, Jacob, for a minute, and I'll, I'll grab that, that particular bottle I want to show you. Um, I'm going to say don't rush and get it right now. If you can get a pour of it or you know somebody that has it, try it. I like the proof. The proof is fine. I like the spice. I like the zest. Even a little lemony zest is what I'm getting. So I think also that though is mixed with some, uh, it's because it's a younger whiskey. So I think some of that zestiness, that lemon zest I'm getting is the young notes off of the whiskey itself. But 
Can I sip this? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can't tell you to rush out and buy it. However, if you do like Hirsch, if you, um, for the money, it's not overly expensive or anything like that. Like I said, uh, here, let's just say 60 bucks out the door. That includes your tax. So, and I don't think it's bad. I, I'm going to give it, you know, a couple of weeks. I'll have another pour or two out of it. Get it, get it to the shoulder and, and let, let nature take its course. Let that air in there, see what it does and, and open that bottle up. It's, it's good. I mean, you know, it's okay. It's, it's not, I don't want to run my tongue across the carpet to get the taste off like I did at uh, Discovery 5. But, um, yeah, I, I, cause I don't think it's bad, but I, I can't honestly tell you, oh, yeah, you got to run out and buy one of these now, go online, order it now, have it delivered. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that to you. But, again, I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's terrible at all. Um, I would pour another one, you know, after I finish this and, and just kind of visit it a while. I think it's going to be that type of a whiskey that air in a bottle of oxidation and some time is going to do it well. And then some time for you to sit with it and enjoy it, pick it apart, savor it, um, you know, just Now, see, I don't know why I got a licorice, like a, a red licorice note. That might be the, the better thing to say. Um, yeah. Blue run, high rye in the glass. Uh, okay, man, that's all right. I, as long as you like that Z man, you know it. Just it didn't, it didn't tickle my fancy. Whenever I I had it and reviewed it, it just will, you know. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, James, perfect. But so. Yeah, I don't think it's, like I said, I, it's definitely not terrible. And you know what? Hold on. Let me clean my palate. Here's the horizon in here. Let me just get a little sip. See, on the nose, on the horizon, I definitely don't get that zest. So when I mean the horizon versus the bivouac, this is the horizon, and that's what's in this glass. So in, in, in the comparison... The zest is in this one now that I'm really focusing on it. It's light, very light. There is that 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 fruit zest, citrus zest in there, but not like in the bivouac. Now, like I said, that being said, this is four year juice versus three years, so another year. It's just it is darker, and you know, from the horizon to the bivouac, you can tell that. The horizon is just a touch darker than it. So, yeah, I could definitely tell you run out and get the horizon right now. I, I, I think it's a nice sipper. It it does not have the spice, unfortunately. I wish it would have like the bivouac because I like that rye spice in there is the way it comes across my tongue. But this has more of your traditional flavors when it comes to a bourbon at four years old in the horizon. Uh, I like it. It has that sweetness on the tongue. It has a bit of an oily texture to it. And the sweetness kind of just gently comes back on the palate. And I like that when I'm, when I'm drinking that particular one. Like I said, it's not one that I grab every day, every week, every month. I haven't touched this thing in a couple of months. And it's one of those things that went into my rotation and got put back on the shelf. I'm going to say put back. 
is in back further. So my wife picked this up for me on Friday and said, hey, you need to you need to review re review this along with your other one. Well, then I dug this out, the horizon, the blue one, and started working on it. And it wasn't, well, it's half gone now. It was it was up a little further, but I've taken care of that over the last couple of days. And it's easy to do when something's a good sipper. It's just easy to sit there and just have a few. And today I had four of them, you know, just throughout the day and, and just experiencing and getting reacquainted with it, let's say. You know, it was nice and it was a decent day out here and sitting on the in the backyard there and just having a little whiskey and just doing the experience. But <clears throat> the Hirsch, yes. The Bivouac, it's not bad. I mean, it is not bad. I'm, I, I want to really reserve the final yes, no. <clears throat> I'll do a revisit and say for sure um, before I say yay or nay. But right now, <clears throat> my advice would be um, it's up to you. But, you know, if you can wait for me to go back and say, hey, by the way, I'm going to revisit this. Boom. And I'll let you know for sure after I give it some time in the bottle. And I am going to you know, get this thing down past the shoulder here. And, and uh, so it has a chance to open up properly and I can really experience a couple of, excuse me, a couple of drams and know if it's worth anything, if that makes sense to you. Okay. Jack, don't go far. I'm going to grab that bottle. Some place has the Hearst single barrel port, but they want. Oh yeah, we were just talking about that. Um, I think it was Tim Evans. I'm trying to think. I think it was Tim Evans was talking about, it, or maybe it was Richie Z. But it was one of the two. But anyway, we were talking about that. Yeah, it was Tim. And the cognac cask is is pretty darn good. But they do have a bottle of it here, and I think they want 180, if I'm not mistaken, for it in the cask strength. So yeah. I, I think it's a little on the, the pricey side. You know, I <clears throat> I always appreciate that. Always appreciate that. Just smash the crap out of that like button. Really push up that algorithm. That's, that's where it helps. So I heard the original Hearst expression is not so good. Well, I'm drinking the Horizon and... I'm going to tell you what, Z-Man, for 35 bucks, 40 bucks, depending upon you, I know where you are. So I think you and I are real close to the same price. Go buy it. Go buy the Horizon. At 92 proof, it's a great little sipper, without a doubt. JD, cheers, brother. You always keep a bottle of Hirsch Horizons. It's my go-to when I mix drinks and good neat as well. It is. It is. For 35 bucks, like I said, 40 bucks. You, it's one of those ones that you cannot go wrong with. So the Horizons is a definite, yeah, go pick one up. You know, just don't leave it sit there. It is something that's, it's a nice sipper. And to give somebody that may not be a big whiskey fan, but it's a nice starter whiskey too for somebody, without a doubt. Without a doubt, it is not. And no, the cast strength is not cheap. There is nothing cheap about it. And I'm not sure because I haven't researched it at all, uh, Tim, if like 80 bucks is pretty much the going price from the East Coast to the West Coast. So I don't know. Um, if you've seen it, do you remember what it was going for in Illinois? Let me know. And then, you know, I can kind of judge for myself if it's overpriced, which well, unfortunately today, a lot of the whiskey is just darn overpriced. <clears throat> But um, Jack here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I think you told me you picked this up, but I'm going to have to give you a call here this week and, and chat about some other uh, appropriations. But here. It's the rock oyster in the cask strength. 
So I just wanted you to see that. So I, I got this gifted to me today. And I was like, holy crap. This was like, oh my gosh. I couldn't believe it. And it is the Douglas Lang Rock Oyster. So I'm like, ah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I do want to open it, but I'm not because I'm I'm sticking with, with bourbon today. And I will open that up and, and do a review of it uh, later on. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, for the money, you, you can't beat the Horizon Z-Man. So, yeah, next time you're out and about, if it's there, yeah, pick one up. Like I said, it, it's not going to, you know, throw you back in the chair and go, oh, my God, Nirvana. No. But once you sip it, it has what you want. It has some proof. It's it's not, it's only 92. Is that what I said? God, let me get my eyes focused on it again. Yeah, 92, 46 ABV. But it's a decent everyday sipper for the money. Decent. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, 30, 35 is what I think it's going for here, JD. Yep. Old school bottling. Okay, 180. All right. So 185 here is what I think is what that bottle really was. Because I'm really giving it a third thought. I'd have to ask my wife because she originally looked at that and said, yeah, no. She thought I would have a cow if she bought it. Well, I probably would. But it's like, why would you buy that? I don't, I don't know anything about that yet. And then spend, you know, 200 bucks on a bottle. It's like, what? I don't have a problem with it if it's a good whiskey. But when you're not sure, and I haven't had a chance to ask you or people that I know. So anyway, yeah. So if you're getting, if they're asking 180 where you are, they're asking the same, basically 185, 180 here, then okay. I, I feel better knowing that 180 kind of seems to be the price. I mean, you can, I could probably find it for a few dollars less also. Definitely, you know, you can find it for a few dollars more, but 180 is going to be about the price. Perfect. Cheaper than a Willet Purple Top? I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yeah, it is. Um, oh, I thought you did. Well, last time we talked, you found that 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 nice pot of gold, let's say, and. Um, so I'm like, ooh. So anyway, like I said, we'll, we will chat over the phone here coming up um, because I, I, I want to make sure that there's some things still available. And um, that really just got me going again today. So really was well, totally an unexpected gifting that I got today. So I was like, holy smokes, what a great, great gift. That's for sure. Well, yeah. So, like I said, I know where one of them is, at least here. Anyway, uh, I know where they are here. And like I said, it's 185. And, um, you know, with your points, I could probably end up spending about a hundred and a half for it. But I don't know much more about it. So, I'm going to have to do a little more research. 240 yeah see i would not pay i wouldn't even look at it for 240 jacob wouldn't do it well he's probably trying to tape you up so he can get you in a bag and send your ass home oh i know he's he's pretty dramatic He's pretty dramatic, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it's finished, will it? You're talking about the, the cash strength on the on the horizon, Tim? Is that, is that what you're talking about? I almost got myself confused in which one I was 
grab in there. I'm going back to the, the bivouac here. Now on that sip of the bivouac, I got more of the traditional bourbon. Wow. Sweetness. That spice just kind of caught me. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second there. That's that nice rye spice. Mm. The zest this time was not overpowering. I think I'm really getting acclimated to that particular expression now. So I'm, I'm expecting. I know what I'm going to get, but it, it doesn't seem to be as overpowering. But again, I also had a few sips of the horizon um, before I went to that. And I don't know, maybe that's the combination. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, now I'm intrigued. I don't mind Willet. And Willet's one of those things, you either like it or you don't. And I've tried the purple top and I've tried um, a few other Willets and I don't think they're bad. And I know somebody that's got it and he's just not pleased with it because he said, well, it generally isn't something that he likes, but he goes, you know, this one was one of those ones, not that particular one, but will it itself. He said, this expression, I, I, I he had a little bit of a, an affinity for. So anyway, yeah, I did see it was seven and a half year. I did see that and I thought, what? Only seven and a half year? I'm like, huh, which isn't too bad, but you know, why not eight or ten? Seven and a half? I, I don't know. I just thought it was odd. It's in a nice presentation box. It's in a nice presentation box. Um, but you know, I don't want to pay for a box. And everybody feels the same. You know, you can, hey, this is how you find this bottle just sitting there. I'm fine with that. You know, if it takes 20 bucks off the damn price, okay, I don't need a box because, you know, once it's done, I'm not saving the bottle in the box. So save the paper, save a tree. Oh, Ben, cheers, man. Always appreciate you. And People that are just tuning in, please remember, hit that like button. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe and hit that bell so you get the notifications. Really do appreciate it. Really like my purple top. I would buy it at 180. Yeah, I'm, a lot of people would buy it at 180. But it's one of those things that, you know what, if you got it, enjoy it. I mean, it's it's worth it. Um, you know, I picked up a, a, a GTS two weeks ago and uh, I haven't cracked it yet, but it was one of those things that was in the right place at the right time. And it definitely was the right price. Certainly wasn't that, that stupid, um, you know, thousand plus dollar price. That's for damn sure. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't spend that at all on it. But anyway, And I will be opening that up at some particular point in time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Z-Man. But anyway, let's see. Jacob sent me a thing here. Let me see what he's what he's got here. Because he had one heck of a haul he had a picture of on Discord. Now he's showing me. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Edrador. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but you still got that freaking dickle in the picture. Get that shit out of the picture. Can't believe you would ruin a picture with a bottle of dickle. Gosh, sacrilege. Now the Wilderness Trail Rye, I can I can go for that in the picture that you sent there. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Wilderness Trail Rye. But the dickle, yeah, mm, no. No, I, I I just can't I can't do it. I just haven't found one that that just that that does it for me at all when it comes to George Dickel. That's for sure. Going back to the horizon here, real quick. Mm. 
Wow. Bivouac. Sorry. <clears throat> I said the, the bivouac is definitely spicier than the horizons. But when you start going from A to B, A to B, A to B, B to A, whatever, you start to pick out the similarities in the mash bill. The, the, the taste profile starts to marry and you, you're, you're noticing the similarities into it now. At least I am. But the bivouac is definitely spicier, zestier. Um, love the spice, love the proof of the bivouac. And the more I'm going back and forth and then back to it, that lemon type zest is falling off. But like I said, the, the more that I go back to it, I think some time is going to do it justice in that bottle. So this week I will, uh, get down another dram or two and, and it's probably going to be two because i want to give it give it uh some good space between the uh neck and the and the bottle itself what's in there and then i'm going to leave it set for a couple of weeks and then go back to it and i'm going to try to stay out of the horizons for a while because <laughs> uh that's that's a that's a pretty good it's a it's a pretty darn good uh bottle you know, it's one of those things, like I said, it got pushed back on my shelf and uh, you just, I'm not going after it like I was. And then until she bought me this one, uh, I might have to go and get myself a backup of that one, especially at 35 bucks right now. You know, it's a, it's an affordable bottle that has some flavor and, and taste. What can I say? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Sorry, Jacob sent me another text. I thought he sent me another picture. I I looked at it again and I went, what? I, I missed the text underneath it. But anyway, let's see here. You know, I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm a, 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 a dickle hater, but I just really don't like the minerality. I think in the beginning, the, the taste on the George Dickel is, is pretty good. I mean, I like the fruit notes sometimes I get, and I know a few of them, they, they said they, you know, it gets the Flintstone chewable type vitamin note on it. Well, I didn't get that. And I actually have a bottle of Dickel bottled and bond. I do. If I remember correctly, it's the 13 year old. Now I've had that for two and a half, maybe three years. I don't go to it often, but I don't mind that one. Now I've had other bottled and bonds by Dickel and I don't like it. I've had other George Dickel. Uh, there's, I think it was their sour mash and something else. I just don't care for that minerality taste of that Tennessee whiskey. And that though being said, I, I, I uh, don't mind uncle nearest. I don't get that minerality on the uncle nearest. And they just came out with a rye uh, a little while back. So I'm going to have to pick that one up and, and give that one a, a shot because I, I happen to like uncle nearest. And um, that is a moderately priced bottle between $50 and about $70, depending on which one you get, because they have three, maybe four different expressions right now, if I can remember. Because I think either the rye makes the fourth or the rye is the third, but I think the rye is the fourth. But anyway, if you haven't tried that, I would tell you to guys to to give that one world the uncle nearest to, that's that's not bad at all for the money not at all for the money 
<clears throat> excuse me. Do, do, do. You might have to. Well, you know, some people have told me, and like I said, you got to have some proof to it, but add a little water to some of the whiskeys. And I have never was a proponent of it, adding water to whiskey. I have since changed my perspective on that, depending upon the whiskey. Depending upon the whiskey. I will add, literally when I say drops, a drop or two of water. But um, in all, yeah, I, I don't generally do that. All right, Jacob, cheers, man. Uh, I'll be in touch with you um, and we'll chat, buddy. Appreciate you. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that, Richie Z, but you could be right. The rye is Canadian, really? Hmm. Wow. Okay. And Tim, were you referring to the Uncle Nearest I was talking about, the rye? on that or did i miss something in chat because i was i was chatting or or what or are you talking referring about the dickel but anyway i just need a little clarification sorry tim cheers man hope you're doing well appreciate you buddy but anyway Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to just wanted to to make sure. Wow, they're sourcing it from Canada. Hmm. Wow. I know they. I know they did a big addition to the distillery itself uh, within the last year, and I think it might have just just opened because I have a signed bottle from the master distiller, and I met her. 2021, I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe 2021, and I had her sign a bottle because that's that's where I first experienced it. But, you know, Uncle Nearest is uh, very well regarded. The man, he is, of course, deceased, but him back in the time because... He is pretty much the person that brought the Lincoln County process to life. That particular process they do in Tennessee. So, um, and him and Jack Daniels were very close. And if you think of that time frame of Jack Daniels and then, of course, the uncle nearest, it was very unusual relationship in one that was probably frowned upon at the particular time. But however, Jack Daniels distillery talks about Uncle Nearest. Sorry if I if you heard that on the mic, I smacked it. Um but if you go to the Uncle Nearest distillery, they have researched and documented this relationship, but also that particular Lincoln County process. But that's what turned me on to Uncle Nearest before I even met uh, the distiller um, about it. So it's a product of Canada aged in New York and Tennessee and bottled at Uncle Nearest. Check the, oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Well, now. Aged in New York and Tennessee? Huh. I wonder, Alberta Premium? I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. But that is weird. I never looked at the label. 
I've seen the bottle. I saw it today. And I think I told Andrew from that. I go, I'm hearing that that's not a bad bottle. I go, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's new. It's just out. But I didn't know about all that. So now you're going to, now I definitely will uh, be more inquisitive on that. Definitely be more inquisitive on that because, um, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be made in Canada and then spend some time in New York and then down in Tennessee. Maybe it does something for it. Maybe aged in between two states, shaking it up in the barrel, going from point A to point B, and then its final destination to Tennessee. I mean, they take barrels and put them on ships and send them out to the ocean and let them rock around for a while, thinking that it's it does miracles for it, right? I'm not fond of those oceans uh, voyages, let's say. Uh, I know my nephew has one or two of them. One is okay. If I remember right, the second one, he he enjoys. I think he has two. He's not in here tonight, but uh, if he was, I'd ask him again. But I, I was chatting with him earlier via text. But yeah, maybe it does. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I'm, I'm not a I'm not against it. I, I would definitely go and, and pick up a bottle just for, you know, shits and giggles factor because I like rye. That's for sure. So, and if the price is right, eh, I'll, I'll take a gamble on it. It's worth it to me. Hmm. All right. So not bad at all. Not bad at all. Let's catch up here and make sure I got everybody here in chat and make sure I didn't miss a question or anything like that. And I don't think I did, although it's easy sometimes to to miss. Like I've always tell you guys, it's always easy for me to miss stuff because sometimes it just it gets going good. And I, I don't slow it down. That's the part I forget, especially when it's just uh, me here. <laughs> And uh, yeah, sometimes it's it's very hard to uh, catch everything that's going on. Very, very hard. That's for sure. But anyway, cannot complain. Cannot complain. I'm I'm like I said. I'm not totally disappointed with with the bivouac. I'm not at all. Um, you know, the more I sit here and go between the two, I'm picking out a lot of similarities between. Uh, the bottles, the bivouac is starting to edge it out a little bit, only because of the spice and the proof. Overall flavor, Hirsch, the Horizon, definitely has a beat right now, right now. So I know I keep saying it and going back and forth, but you know, every time I go from the bivouac back down over to the horizon, the scale is really starting to, to I don't want to say completely even out, but it, it's starting to, it's starting to even out a little bit, you know, but what's setting it apart is definitely the, the citrus zest, the proof on that. Um, and then on the horizon, it's definitely the, the sweetness and I just wish that spice was just mm, just a little bit more. That would be that would really really make it. Wow. So yeah, that turned out to be uh, like I said. I'm it turned out to be a, a good. Compare and contrast, particularly the two, because they're, like I said, if, if you have them or if you end up getting Bivouac and you have Hirsch or, or excuse me, the Horizon or vice versa, they're really good to go back and forth with. I'm going to give you that right now because that's what I'm doing. It's like, wow, they're really good to go back and forth with. Um, and it's like, hmm, because normally I would have been done with those and turned around and found something else there on the shelf to to uh, toast out the night with, but uh, I think I'm going to stay with these two here for a little bit while longer and go back and forth and uh, really give a little more breakdown on here, not only for you, but 
for me, um, yeah, it's like I said, it's getting the, the scale starting to even out a little bit here. So, oh, Jay, cheers, man. If, if you, you're just popping in, okay. And I was like, I, I don't know if I missed you because I was just talking when I was going through the chat earlier. I was like, make sure I didn't miss anybody or miss a question. And then all of a sudden I, you popped in there. So cheers, man. Appreciate you, you coming in here, man. Thank you. But let me get a drink of water here. So, you know, Tim, I forgot about this. <laughs> it's the thing that things get thrown, you know, get back, get put back into your shelf. However, I got a, that old scout. I think it was from you. Yeah. I haven't opened that yet. And I'm like, I got to open that sucker. I don't know if you remember that one. Hold on. Uh This one right here. And I, I haven't, I haven't touched it yet. And like I said, it got put back on the shelf and every now and then I go through everything and I, I, I pulled this thing out again. I went, Holy crap. I keep forgetting about this sucker in there. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to, pop this thing open and, and try that out. But uh, yeah, that's the one I, 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 I got from you. So I'm <laughs> going to get this thing open and, and give it a whirl. That's for sure. But it just, again, popped into my head because you're here tonight. And I actually looked at its thing again and went, oh man. So now it's up front. So I, that's why it's on that shelf. And I was like, okay, there's Alberta premium up there. There's, uh, there's, Kentucky Owl up there. There's a few other things I got to get to. <laughs> so now this is on there. So I'll get to this thing eventually. And I'm sorry. I know you probably thought I drank this thing already, but no, I, I haven't yet, but I'm going to get to it. I promise I'm going to get to it. That's why it was on that shelf. And I said, you, you were happy to be in chat today and made me think of it again. So uh, I'm, I'm going to open that sucker up. Yeah. I'm sure it is nice, <laughs> but I haven't gotten to it yet, and I am sorry, but, and I have, I got uh, some Stacy from Four Leaf Whiskey. She dropped me off some samples and uh, of Irish. And that reminds me, I don't know what I did with them. I'm going to have to look now because now my little pea brain's going. But I've got some Irish today from Andrew. Some of the samples that he was drinking, he saved for me that he got from Donald Rance. So I'm going to get to experience a few of those. Uh, and enjoy that. And then I have this beautiful little thing here that JD Bourbon Approach dropped off to me. So it's filled with some delicious goodies that I haven't even cracked the top yet on it um, on there. So a lot more I've got to go through. And he always drops off some epic pours for me. I mean, I, I I can't thank people like him and Stacy and you know Andrew and Sugar Kitty and Jacob and um the bourbon bar and stuff who have sent me stuff because you know they pop out here and drop it off and Top Dog, I don't know if you guys know uh Top Dog has kind of his own little mix and he sent it to me. Oh, it's up there, his little top dog thing. And I tell you what, he and I talked about it one 
I went and met him up uh, on the strip. And I tell you for sure, I, I really thought it was a, a turkey product. Really thought it was a turkey product, but it's something that he puts together and blends himself. And uh, and it's what was really even funnier. We talked about the his blend. But I never tasted it until he gave me that. And I'm like, wow. But anyway, so I have some deliciousness all over here. And you know, you've heard other ones talk about floor whiskey. Well, believe me, it's it's around me, and I've been working on getting it from the floor to the shelves, to the different areas so that I can start <laughs> keeping up with it and tasting it and reviewing it or just plain enjoying it myself while I'm sitting out on the patio. And, you know, I, I mean, the generosity of, of people here is is amazing. And particularly when they come here to Vegas, they're always like, Anthony, I got stuff for you. I got stuff for you. I got stuff for you. And I'm just... I mean, out of the blue, out of the blue. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do appreciate it a lot. It's 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 really great. And the way these these people just when they come here, oh, here you, I brought this for you. I got this for you. I got this for you. Honestly, it's it's overwhelming sometimes. It's like, oh, my gosh, the generosity is 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 truly amazing. So to those people. I will raise a glass to say cheers and thank you. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to um, the writer's tears finished in ice wine casks and. Oh, my gosh. There's another one, and I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm not going to say it, but I'm very interested in that particular finish, if that's what it is on there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know exactly where. I think I do know now where they are. I think I do know where they are now. I just have to get them. But anyway, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we got here? But, well, I am going to finish up my, I am going to pour a little more of this in my glass tonight and have that as my, oh, man, that's a nice little pop because like I said, I do want to work this down a little bit. There we go. Get a little more in the glass. So I have something here. It is a, it's a little, you got to apply a little pressure on this thing to get that thing to push down into the bottle, which is fine, which is fine. And it's, it is not a true cork. It's a synthetic cork, but I'm not a purist. I'm fine with synthetic corks. So yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't turn me that it's not. Some people, you know, say, oh, it's, it's, they're terrible. Uh, there's no caring here. The only thing I care about is that it keeps the whiskey in the bottle. If the bottles fall over, I don't want loose corks or just like, um, Durrell opened, I think it was old Carter today. He, Went to open it and the cork broke boom, down into the bottle and he had the other half. But it happens. Anybody that has whiskey knows it happens. But mm. um, is it Grizzly Beast? By uh, Redwood Empire. Anyway, I finally actually got to try that today. 
bottled and bond, hundred and proof, hundred proof. And you know what? It was okay, but I think they're like a hundred bucks a bottle, and I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. It definitely isn't worth it. It's good, but give me Lost Monarch. Give me Pipe Dream. Give me Emerald Giant. I'm sorry. It's not a $100 bottle. Absolutely not a $100 bottle. So it won't be sitting on this shelf unless I get a good deal or, again, uh, someone gifts me the bottle or they, I, I get you know, another sample of it. I'm not going to turn that down. I, like I said, I don't think it was terrible, but at, at a hundred bucks for the bottle, I are, you have got to be crazy. You have got to be crazy. Like I tell you, when you want some, uh, a good rye, you want to go down to total wine, get their Russian river rye for 35 bucks. It's 92 proof. And it's made by Redwood empire. So, yeah, exactly. If when you look at that bottle, if you know any Redwood Empire bottles, they're the same. And then read an actual Redwood Empire bottle and look at that other bottle. It's called Russian River Rye. They use the Russian River Aquifer to get their pure water to make their distilled spirits. Hmm. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's just at a hundred bucks for the grizzly beast, grizzly beasts. I kind of remember if I'm even saying the name correctly on there, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good, but definitely not a hundred dollars. Good. I said that that bottle would probably be, you know, 50, 60 bucks. So I figured bottled and bond because the, the other ones are, 35 40 I figured bottle to bond, maybe 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Yeah, you know, when he told me it was 100 plus, I'd like, you, it'll rot on the shelf before I buy it. That's for sure. Hey, Dave, cheers, man. Yeah, Andrew had it with me. We were sipping on it today, and and what he said right there was the fruit flavor, and I, which, was, which surprised me um, to get that. But at what they were, well, they didn't have it there. So this was somebody's personal bottle that that brought it in that we got to have a little taste from. And like I said, it was good. But yeah, it, it's definitely was not good for, you know, $100. And from what he said that they're, they go even north of that. And I'm like, they can, but not going to be coming out of my pocket for something like that. Definitely uh, not worth it. Now, the C921, that's a hitter. I, not only do I have one open, I have a backup and then a backup for the backup. And I think I have a backup for the backup for the backup on that. And that was an accident when I bought that because I forgot I forgot I, I forgot I bought the backup. And how I got the second backup for the first backup was because I forgot I bought the first backup because I was so excited to see that bottle again that I picked it up. So I either got one open and I have two backups or I have one open and I have three backups. I forget. But I'm well backed up on that. And that C921 was absolutely delicious. And to still find one right now that was a good find that was a good find um i forget which ones were were on the shelf today when andrew and i were looking but he pointed it out and um i didn't see the price but i think they were around i think one was a toasted barrel i think that one was a private barrel andrew i don't know if you remember or not but i think they were about 65 bucks. I I don't remember. I, I know there was a larceny there too, but I didn't see which larceny it was. Now I have a B5 
five twenty one or is it five twenty two? Damn, I forget. I'm gonna have to open that one of these days because again, it's on the it's on that shelf. When they're on that shelf, everything that goes on there is next up, next up, next up. But anyway, yeah, I I, I got to get over there and and, and do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice accident to have. Without a doubt. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that bivouac seems to be taming its taming down. Now, I said I've been on it now for an hour and almost an hour and 20 minutes in between that and the horizons. But now I'm mostly on the bivouac because I poured some more here. And um, <laughs> it's getting a little better every time. So... Uh, I'm really excited to, to, you know, in my mind, getting this down, that bivouac down to the shoulder and then giving it some time to open up in the bottle. I said, giving it a couple of weeks and then go back to it. I think I'm going to be, my mind, I think I'm going to be much more satisfied with the outcome after it has sat for a while. Larceny C922 is probably the best batch ever for me. I did not purchase one of those last year. Not because they were bad. It's just that I've had them and they're generally all good. So I tell everybody, yeah, buy them, buy them, buy them. And I actually had all three in my hand at one time. And I've just like, eh, you know, so that I'm not missing out. I, I mean, in my head, that FOMO is gone. You know, a few years ago, God, it came out. I was just snatching it up, snatching it up, snatching it up. But now it's like, I've got them. I've tasted them. I've got the C921. I've got toasted barrels. I've got private barrels. I've got 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds and blah, 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 blah. Some of the problem I do have, though, with them when they get into that private barrel, there are a few picks that aren't. But most of the private barrels are the 94 proof. Come on. Jack it up a bit. G get that thing at least 100 or north of 100. I, I mean, it, it would be absolutely amazing. Amazing. That is why if I'm going to buy Elijah Craig's, it's like the C922, the C921 like I have and stuff like that, that I know are over 100 proof. Because to me, that flavor for that particular distillery, uh, it really just pops. The toasted barrel is good just the way it is. I don't know what it is and how that extra char on the barrel or whatever, but wow, that really does make the Elijah Craig toasted barrel just a phenomenal sipper. Really does. Really, really does. Yeah, they must, they must, you know, their supplier must find some in the back from time to time and then bring it out and they get it. So that it is a good thing. I mean, if you have a chance to get yourself a backup for that and just sit it on the shelf, I, I'm going to tell you to do that on that C921. Um, without a doubt, do it and then just it's one of those ones you just put on the shelf and then a year, two years or so later, see, man, you, you, you grab that sucker again. Okay. So at liquor lineup two, it was 70 for the Elijah Craig or Larceny. Okay. 69. Okay. I was thinking 65. So I, I'll give you that because I, I didn't really look at it last year's. Those took a lot of work to track down. Yeah. Well, that, that's how it goes. Like I said, last year I had all of the releases, the A122, the 
B, 522, and the C, 922. I had them all right there in my hand. They were all on the shelf. And um, I was just like, eh. I mean, I'm not really kicking myself. And the more I talk about it, though, I go, oh, you're ass. You should have bought them. But I, I didn't need them. I already know they're good, but it just wasn't what I wanted at the time. You were in the store talking to Minnesota Snowbirds on price. Well, yeah. Well, when I was down in Yuma a couple of weeks ago, um, it was starting to clear out. Snowbirds were going back to the main nest to roost for a few months. And a lot of the Canadians were, were getting ready and going north. Hey, Mr. Jiggs. Cheers, brother. Appreciate you for popping in here and stopping by. Just remember to smash that like button, please. Always do appreciate that. But yeah, you can't. The the Elijah Craig does make a decent product that is consistent. And one of the ones that I will tell you is always consistent. is just the Elijah Craig small batch. I really like that. I recommend that a lot to people particularly people who want something that's flavorful, but also something to mix with. Now, most of you know I don't mix drinks, but every time I've recommended that particular bottle, um, I have not had, I don't think one disappointed person in that Elijah Craig small batch for, I don't know, 35 bucks. 37 bucks. I don't know what it is now. I have it on there, so I haven't purchased it a while. I mean, I went through a bottle and bought and went to the backup, but I haven't replaced it to get another backup because it generally is always on the shelf. Always on the shelf. Okay, James, that's right. You, it's your spring forward. We already did that here. I wish we would get rid of that stupid time change thing. I mean, it's irrelevant now. But cheers, man. Always appreciate you over there across the pond. Have a great day, sir. See, around here, no one wants to see 921 or 922 more char. While I enjoy the B520. Oh, well. Now you're going back a bit there. Now you're now you now you're making me sit up because I know what you're saying. Yeah. More uh chocolate brownie notes for me and more in my wheelhouse. So that that chocolate note that you're talking about, I have heard that in the uh um A123 and then um, are you expecting it in the C923? Is that what you're thinking? It's going to be consistent through the releases? Because C923, I, I, don't, I don't think that's out yet. If it is, you're lucky. But on the uh, A123, Yes, I have heard that about the chocolate note in there. And that, that I will say, did intrigue me for this year's release. So I was like, hmm, that is interesting. So we'll just have to see. Because now that you've uh, kind of made me think about it again, I may just have to pick one of those up next time I see it just so I can get that experience. Canadian Snowbirds specifically, I really love Arizona. Oh yeah, there's there's a lot of them down there in Yuma. A lot of them. I mean, but like I said, they're heading they're heading north right now. So All right again, night James. Appreciate you over there across the pond, man. Look forward to seeing you again. 
No, no, they they're pretty consistent uh, uh, with their products, uh, Z Man. They're pretty consistent as far as um, putting out quality. It's, you know, that's the name of the game. I mean, you always can't put out absolute hitters, but if you if you keep that level how much this if you can keep if you can keep working at that level of what's the word i'm looking for consistency like they do with those releases and able to get the same profile time and time again other than the proof because the, the proof will vary between batches that they release. I think they do a great job at being consistent with those releases. And just like Mr. Jigs was saying and everyone else, some of those are absolutely just out of this world. And other ones, they're good. You know, they're worth buying. Maybe not buying a backup, but they're worth worth buying. And pretty much everyone I've talked to, I don't think I've seen one that says it's an absolute shitter. I haven't. I don't think I've heard anyone say any of those Elijah Craigs are shitters. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know where you were getting that at. I could see that I can see the 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 123, the A123, but okay. Okay. Gotcha. Well, hey, look, I I mistype a lot, so you're not going to get any any guff from me because I'm just as bad as the next person. Really, ethanol on there, huh? Wow. All right. Well, the um, C922, I don't recall what that was, but I think you're right. B520, I'm trying to remember. I don't recall that note of chocolate on there, but it's intriguing that you said it was in the the B520, and now you're saying it's in the A123. So like I said, now, like I said, I'm, for me to find a, a B520 to be able to compare it, if I bought the this year's release in the A123, yeah, wishing one hand and shit in the other. But that's just not going to happen. But anyway, uh, I may have to actually now look for one of those and I might buy that A123 because I've had a few bottles that had a nice Hershey's type chocolate note not as thick and as heavy but you knew what it was and it really accompanied the whiskey well and um you may have heard me talk about it but when story time released Christmas wasn't this one, it was a year ago. It's the Christmas 22, so it was Christmas of um 21. Wow, that was phenomenal, and the chocolate was like bam. I mean, you you knew it, and if you didn't know, you would thought you were eating a chocolate bar. It was that creamy chocolate from that particular release that Storytime did. And it was amazing. And then that's what sparked my interest in true, rich, chocolatey taste in a whiskey. And I never thought I'd like it. But this was not like the artificial... Yeah, it just it just it wasn't what I was expecting in a whiskey. So that being said, 
That was really good. So now when I hear that, it sparks my interest. Well, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, so I didn't buy anything last year at all of those. Um, I have C921. That's for sure. And I liked it. I don't know. It's one of those wait and sees um, to see what happens. I don't think C921 <sighs> excuse me, had a lot of char in it. Um, but, you know, like I said, it was it was decent to me. So what I, I will tell you what I thought had a lot of char in it was the latest release of Lagavulin Offerman, the charred oak. When I reviewed it in September, I did not find that very good with that heavy char note on it at all. Wish Alberta got any CBP, maybe only once a year, two or three stores in Solarium. Yeah, but I bet you it's not $70 US a bottle. That's for sure. So the people know follow the release dates and have their ears to the ground to hear the delivery train coming. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark. Cheers, man. Thank you for popping in. Appreciate you. Always good to see you. That's for sure. Hmm. You know, they let that thing probably go one more year in a bottle on that bivouac. I think they really might have uh, done well. I don't know what made them release it at three years and then mix a little eight in there because you know when they mix stuff like that in my opinion now is that they were covering up something so what i'm going to say is they're using the eight year to cover up some of the very young whiskey notes of the three year just my opinion what do i know hey tater dom cheers man Thank you for popping in over here. Really do appreciate that. Thank you. And remember, smash that like button, hit that bell, and make sure you guys are getting all the notifications. But always appreciate that. That's for sure. Thank you. Hmm. Well, hopefully. If this goes the way I think it will with Hirsch, the bivouac, uh, that uh, I think it's going to turn out to be a decent bottle. Young notes, young note. Young whiskeys, young whiskey. Only time will tell, but I think they should have just left it go f four years plus instead of the three. Again, my opinion. Hey, sometimes you just got to look, Z-Man. You just got to look. All right. Well, hey, that's always a plus. I think I've told you before, Ben, my grandmother, she's 97 years old. So, you know, that that's a blessing in itself that uh, she's still here in the round to see it. That's for sure. And actually, she just got over COVID not too long ago and really had no big issues with it. At, at her age. 
Just got done filming a couple of video reviews. Got to wake up early in the morning and wanted to make sure I popped in and say hi. Well, you know what, Mark? Cheers, sir. Really appreciate you popping in. Thank you very much. And uh, don't worry. I'll look at them videos. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, 2019. Last time you seen your grandma. That's a that's a long time. But you know, things that happened over the last couple of years, it's probably prudent to have a little distance. But anyway, I'm right, gonna get a little more water here on the palate. All right. Well. Yeah, the fruit note's still prevalent. The fruit the fruit note is still very prevalent on this bivouac. I know I keep going back to it and talking about it, but you know, that's that's my thing and um that's the 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 drop I've been working on here because I really do like to spend time with it so that when I'm discussing it with you, that um, I'm, I'm trying to be fair and honest and really give the whiskey its chance. Because, you know, sometimes it is bad. And we all know that. Other times it just needs a little space. And other times it's a it's a it's a hitter right out of the bottle. It's like holy smokes, and you can only imagine what what it would be after you know a week or two in the bottle with a little air. If it was really good on the first pour and it really made your foot tap, yeah. So, all right, Ben. Cheers, man. Thanks for popping in from up there in Canada. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Well, what we'll do is we'll end up calling it a night here. I'm going to finish my dram and say I will look forward to seeing you all next week. And remember, the wife said that she was going to sit in uh, on the show. So I will have a co-host sitting here or here or, you know, somewhere uh, with me next week. So she will be here for a little bit and you all get to see her more. And uh, the person that buys me surprise whiskeys. Floor whiskey fell over. That's what that was. I'm like, what the heck? You can't be in a whiskey room and not have whiskey on the floor. But eventually it will make it somewhere on the shelf before it makes it over to the shelf to... <laughs> To where it comes to to here and where I talk to you. But anyway, just want to say cheers again, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. A couple weeks, I'll do a revisit on the Hirsch Bivouac and uh, give you the final result on it and what I really think about it. Um, and like I said, today, I think it's, it is good, but I can't tell you to rush out and buy it today. Maybe in a couple of weeks. Things will improve, and I will change that by uh, order to go and get yourself one. So until I see you and talk to you all next week, everybody, cheers. Have a great week. See you all next weekend. Thank you.